Welcome to Emmerdale. Thanks. Oh, I presume the rest of your crew will arrive later. <laughs> this is my crew. It's the way we find it works best. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you just take your things to reception, my dad'll take them up to your rooms, OK? Great. I want to get started straight away. Good, good. Is this the film crew? We're actually television, doing a piece for the anniversary of the plane crash. I know what you're doing, and you ought to interview me, cos I've got a lot to say on it. In that case, we'll be set up in half an hour or so. Come back then. Great. She can't give you the same in-depth insight to what I can, you know? We'll see. You're pencilled in for the day after tomorrow. Oh, good. <coughs> good. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, I really don't understand. Uh, she left for work 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I appreciate that, Paddy, but I'm sure she'll sort it out as soon as she gets there. Yeah, oh, hang on, this might be her now. Uh, Paddy. <sighs> no, uh, sorry, it wasn't her. It must have been the postman. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure she'll be there soon. Yeah, yeah, I'll let her know if I see her. There's Paddy spitting blood because you're late again. Well, he can whistle. I'm going to be on the telly. Can you imagine what a boost that'll be for my cleaning business? Yeah, maybe, but don't you think you ought to put in an appearance at the vet's first? Yeah, later. I've got more important things to do. Why do they want you on the television? Oh, some special report on the plane crash. <laughs> I just need to work out how to get a plug in. Oh, I've got it. Well, there must have been loads of mess, so I can say how much quicker the clean-up would have been if Miss for you had been round. Wouldn't that be in rather bad taste? I'm just following in Father's footsteps. I've got to strike while the iron's hot, like you did with your deal. Make sure you call Paddy. Huh? Just proves they can't do without me. <laughs> Might teach him to appreciate me more. You really must try and be a little bit more public-spirited about this. It is the public I'm thinking of. A lot of people will find their report extremely offensive. I'm sure it'll be done with great sensitivity, and it'll certainly help local economy. Just think of the extra tourists we'll get when it's shown. Hi, Dad. Don't mind me, Dad. He's never understood economics. I sometimes think that nobody appreciates the work that I do for them in this village. That is not true, Eric. There's a lot of people admire you, as you will see at the Chamber of Commerce Christmas drinks this afternoon. Huh. I doubt it. They're more likely to be gossiping about Gloria. Mm. She's damaged us both, but we won't let her hold us back. Well, I don't intend to. I've decided the only answer is a clean break. I'm going to start divorce proceedings. Why? You are making a fresh start. Well, why don't you take me along this afternoon? Give them something new to gossip about. Hmm. So, Nicola, can you describe the impact the plane crash had on life here in Emmerdale? I woke up that morning with a strange feeling of foreboding. I've always had a sort of sixth sense about tragedy. What's going on here? Cut! We're doing a new special for the anniversary of the plane crash. Well, she didn't even live in the village when it happened. Is that true, love? Well, technically, but I read a lot about it in the papers. I'm afraid that's not enough. You sound like you know the facts. Yeah, well, it's not something I want to talk about. Well, there's my mobile number if you change your mind. I won't. Oh. How's it going? I'm getting the feeling this isn't going to be as straightforward as you suggested. Oh, well, you can always change the time of my interview. As I said, uh, there's plenty I can tell you. <laughs> I can't believe you're talking to them. I consider it my civic duty. You reckon there's money in it more like? I can assure you, he is not typical. Stick with me and you'll get your story. All about time and all. Paddy said he'd only be a minute. That was about half an hour ago. OK, keep your hair on. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to be at work. I'm only coming for Bolin's worming tablets. I don't see why Paddy couldn't have sorted that out. Cos he got called out on an emergency. And I'm supposed to have shop open now, so if you don't mind, can you just hurry up a bit? Hello? Yes, this is Maze for you, Nicola Blackstock, managing director speaking. Can you just get me them tablets? I'll leave you to it. Ah, oh, as a matter of fact, I've just been preparing your quote and I'm sure you're going to find us very competitive. If we can find you. How dare you? 
Well, I want those tablets. Well, then get them yourself. And you know where you can stick them. Thought you'd given up. So did I. Guess I'm just weak. If fags are going to help you get through the next couple of weeks, go for it. I think it'll take more than that. I'm used to being half a couple. It'll take a while to come to terms with the idea it's over. What are you two doing out here? I do not pay you to skive, you know. We were just taking a break. Well, if you don't back your ideas up, you might just find yourselves on a permanent one. Okay, come on. Okay, we're going back. Just lay off her, will you? She's going through a difficult time right now. Oh. Well, if she wants sympathy, she can phone us Samaritans. The world does not stop because a marriage breaks up. Some of us just have to cope with it. Come on. Which reminds me, your wife phoned earlier. She says it's urgent she speaks to you. Don't you have an opinion on my alcohol purchases today? No. I just thought you were starting to get your Christmas drinks together. Something like that. Will you be spending it with Edna? Oh, I doubt it. Fear I've rather overstayed my welcome. She's gone off to stay with Mildred for a few days. I think she'd be grateful if I'd gone by the time she gets back. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, where will you go? I wish I knew. Is she Nicola? Wasn't she at the vet? No, not anymore, no. I'm sure there's a simple explanation. Well, well, I better have to. Tonight. Can't afford it. It'll be all we can do to manage the rent this month. <sighs> Christmas with your mum to follow. <sighs> Got nothing to look forward to. Hey, you'll be okay. Mum and Gran always put on a good spread, and I know they'll love you. Well, let's share a room, though. I mean, what is that about? Mm. Yeah, they are a bit old fashioned like that. They're old enough to know the facts of life. Maybe you should just spell it out to them. Mm. Well, we need to do something, because I don't fancy being a penniless yuletide nun, OK? I'll get it. Yeah. Morning, happy campers. Morning. Come in. Oh, I've been about early, I see. Nothing to get up for. I've no work and I'm broke. Ah, well, maybe this is your lucky day. I think I can change all that for you. Father Christmas come early. Well, I could certainly do with some festive cheer. Part your reindeer, then, and tell us the good news. You remember Howard Bevan? Was that the one who put the million in your bank? Mm, that's uh, him. Wasn't he the one Diane said was planning a lot of building work around here? A lot of building work. Ooh, sounds like our kind of guy. Well, I'm meeting him in the Woolpack at lunchtime. I'll make the introductions after that. It's up to you. We're looking for stories about how it brought the community together. I don't have anything to say, and I don't want to appear on your programme. This is unbelievable. Such small-mindedness. Perhaps you could try being a little less insensitive. I'm just doing my job. Perhaps he'll abandon the project when he finds nobody's willing to speak to him. I don't know what you're being so pious about. You're making money out of it. I don't want blood money. I suppose it's too much to ask to be thanked for bringing them in. Well, from now on, I'll help myself, not you. Yeah, I'm really sorry about being cut off earlier, but it's all been sorted out now, and I'll have your quote ready for you in the morning. Yeah, I'll see you at eight tomorrow. Nicola, something tells me that wasn't about a sick pet. It's my lunch hour. I can phone him while I like. Two minutes of work does not entitle you to a lunch break. It's just been a bad day. You can't blame me for trying to get on the telly. It would have been great for my business. For your business? What about my business? I pay you as a receptionist. Sometimes you've just got to follow your dream. You know what I mean, don't you, Dad? I think it's time you got your priorities right, Nicola. This can't go on, Nicola. Rodney, I, w I was in the middle of neutering today and I had to answer a phone call from someone that wanted to know if I knew how to get red wine stains out of carpets. Did you take the number? No, I didn't. I told them that they got through to the vets by mistake, which is exactly what you'll be doing from now on if you want to keep your job. But I can manage both. That's not an option anymore, Nicola. 
If you want to go on working for me, you turn up tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And I don't ever want to hear the phrase, made for you, on my time, ever again. Have you got that? I need to collect a few things. I'm leaving the village. Oh. You didn't mention that last night? I'd rather forget last night. We both said things we shouldn't. I've been thinking it over ever since. I suppose you'd be going to London? Probably. At first, I've got things to collect there too, though there's nothing that would make me stay. I seem to have burned my bridges all round. I really did want to make things right between us, you know. I still believe we're meant to be together. You didn't seem to think that when you went off with Hillary. We both made mistakes, Eric. I suppose I was hoping you'd be thinking things over too, realising what we'd be throwing away. You can't throw away something that's already gone. Has it? You know there'll always be something between us. It's a pity you're such a proud man, Eric, because right now I think that's what's keeping us apart. You just can't face all the gossip. Can you blame me, knowing they're all laughing at me? Small village, small minds, people like that don't matter. We shouldn't let them come between us. We could make a fresh start somewhere else. Somewhere no one even knows who we are. I'd go anywhere with you. All you've got to do is say that's what you want too. Paddy looked to me like a man whose patience had run out. But if my eight o'clock appointment runs over, I'll never make it back to the vets by now. Nicola, I don't even know why you're still at the vets. You should be concentrating on your business. Well, I need it to fall back on. There you go. Thanks, Diane. Well, you know what I think. It's your decision. Maybe you should take your dad's advice for once. He's only trying to help. Who asked you to stick your oar in? There you go. Cheers. Howard? Cheers, Roger. Well, how are you two getting on? Well, Sid may be just the man I'm looking for. Oh, he's one of the best builders I know. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe we were meant for each other. But sometimes you take a wrong turning along the way and there's... there's no going back. Sometimes you just got to admit it's over. Draw a line under the past and move on. I want a divorce. Because you found somebody else. This has nothing to do with other people. This is about you and I realising we've reached the end of the line. I don't want to fight you anymore. I hope you can be civilised about it. Of course. I won't put any obstacles in your way. Thank you. I think it's best to be let the solicitors handle the details, eh? If that's how you want it. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you to, uh, <laughs> to collect your stuff. And uh, please don't think I'm going to get petty about who owns which CD. I hope we can be friends. You never know, in a couple of months' time, you might meet up for a drink and, <laughs> and laugh about it. I'll see you soon. Why so glum, chum? <laughs> oh, I had a bit of a run-in with the boss. Reminded me I'm expendable. Losing a husband and a job in a few weeks wouldn't do much for my self-esteem. I've heard there might soon be a vacancy for a new receptionist at the vets. Mood I'm in, I probably wouldn't even get an interview. Well, we'd better start cheering you up. How about a few drinks later on, you and me? Two girls on the town. Now that sounds like an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> You're looking very dapper. Thank you. So, how did it go with Gloria? Well, she said she wouldn't stand in the way of the divorce and uh, she's decided to leave the village straight away. Couldn't be better. Hmm, it seems so. Although she was in a strange mood. Well, you have just told her you're divorcing her. Which is hardly going to burst into a chorus of the sound of music. <laughs> I suppose so. But she 
was odd. Always has been. Relax. You've got it sorted. You can go to the town hall with a clear conscience. Hmm. Might need a few more of these first, sir. Huh? No jury would convict. Oh. I'll sort us out, Cap. Good idea. Surprise. Uh, Chloe, I wasn't expecting you. Thought I'd come and see if you needed any help. Uh, oh, Mr. Bevan, sorry, uh, this is Chloe. My, uh... Assistant. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Please, sit down. <clears throat> How was she at work this morning? Edgy. She's bound to be down for a while. We ought to try and help her. Yeah, but the trouble is she's married to Dad for so long. So I don't know something else to do with the time. She'll be tough. Hiya, kids. Oh, do, do you want a sandwich? Uh, no, thanks. I've just looked into so I'll be going out tonight. Where are you going? Oh, me and Diane are going to paint the town. <laughs> Them. I don't know. <laughs> You'll be fine. Certainly don't know how I could have got through it all without you. You're a tower of strength. Thank you. <laughs> Are you sure you want Holly? Yeah, it's yeah. better than cooking, isn't it? She's entitled to one night out. How late do you think she'll be? Depends if they pull. Holly, that's disgusting. It's what you're always hoping for. I really don't feel like facing everybody just yet. Oh, you'll be fine once you get there. Remember what we said? This is your fresh start. Maybe it's too soon. No one goes into a marriage expecting it to end, especially like this. I feel such a failure. But it was her fault. Even if that's true, it doesn't make me feel any better. Look, I'm sorry if you were looking forward to the party, but I'd rather go home. Ah, it's OK. There'll be plenty of other times. That's a promise. Thank you. Um, back to the village, please. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you both. Make sure you get that quote in. Mm. It'll be on your desk first thing. Good. I will talk more tomorrow. Looks like it could be a happy Christmas after all. Uh, got you to thank for that. Yeah, you got really interested when you turned up, and I don't think it had much to do with your building expertise. Ah, uh, I know what sounds. Uh, and there a word for girls like that? Well, if that's the case, I'd like my feet, please. Uh, Sorry about that. Well, thank you. I suppose we'd better get back to the factory. After spoiling your afternoon, the least I can do is buy you a drink. Hey. Hey, hey that's my car. Hey! Don't ask to that! She's stolen my car. Can't trust anyone these days, can you? I'm sorry, but I've had just about all I can take from Nicola. She's not interested in the job at all. Well, maybe she'll turn things round now you've given her a warning. She deserves a second chance. Dress to kill, I see. Oh, you've got to be ready for anything, right? I like your style. Hey, why don't you go and have a word with Paddy now? I've got a feeling that job vacancy is going to be coming up very soon. I'll be with you when Louise gets through. Okay. 
Um, I'm sorry to bother you, Paddy, but um, I spent quite a long time looking after the office side of my husband's business, so uh, if ever you wanted a new receptionist... <laughs> well, there's a coincidence. Hey! You said you'd give Nicola another chance. There's no woman having a sub for when she blows it, is there? I'll certainly keep you in mind. OK. Knew you could do it. Stick with me, kid. There's a world of new experiences waiting for you out there. <laughs> I wanted to be civilised about it. I tried to be reasonable with her. Seems like that was a mistake. <laughs> you bet it was. OK. I told her I wasn't going to get petty over the CD collection, but... <laughs> I didn't give her the green light to drive off in my car. That was completely out of order. It's theft. Well, you could inform the police. <laughs> and I have to explain the intimate details of my marriage breakup to some snotty-nosed young copper. No, thank you. She'll pay for the car through the divorce settlement. Oh, I reckon she can afford it, don't you? You must have made a few quid down in Westminster. Uh, probably on the fiddle there, too. I told you she was acting strangely. Huh? I offered her the easy way, but if she wants to fight dirty, then she's picked on the wrong man. No more Mr. Nice Guy for no one. The gloves are off. <laughs>